This is the Lethargic Sloth, and I am pleased to welcome you to the very first episode of The Very Best of 90s Country. In the first episode, we will be looking at the top 10 songs of Doug Supernaw. Doug Supernaw was one of the best vocalists in the 1990s country scene. Unfortunately, he had some hard times with drugs and alcohol and spent over 20 years out of that scene. I stumbled across some songs he released just this year, however. In listening to those songs, it inspired me to make this list, and I am happy to say that Doug Supernaw's re return to country music inspired this entire series, so it was only right to make him the focus of my pilot episode. Please feel free to share your favorite songs by Doug in the comments section below as I love interaction. Likes are always appreciated as well. So without further ado, let's dive in to the best 10 songs of Doug Supernaw. Number 10, She Never Looks Back. She Never Looks Back was released in 1996 and is on Doug's album, You Still Got Me. The song reached number 53 on the country charts. It is a good mid-tempo song in Doug Supernaw's repertoire. It has some comedy within the song. It's fast enough and witty enough to keep one entertained and hold their attention. Number 9. What Do You Do About Me? What Do You Do About Me was written by Dennis Lindell and it was first recorded by McGuffey Lane. It was then recorded by Steve Earle, Randy Travis, the Needy Gritty Dirt Band, John Schneider, and the Forrester Sisters. Doug Supernaw recorded the song in 1995. The song reached number 16 on the country charts for Doug. This is an interesting song, a stalker anthem. Yeah. Look for this song to appear on my future Top 10 Dark Psychopathic Country Songs list. Yes, I am actually making that video right now. It should come out soon. The song is about a man who has a one-night stand with a woman who intends for it to be just that, a one-night stand. So the man, now obsessed with her, lists all the things she can do to get away from him, and that those things won't work. So what does she do about him? It's fast paced and fun and if you can ignore the whole stalker thing it is an enjoyable listen. Number 8 21 to 17 What if I told you there was a song out there that documented a breakup during moments of a football game? That would sound pretty silly, right? Well, there is and surprisingly it is a very good song. This heartfelt ballad released in 1999 recounts a breakup during a championship football game. The score is 21 to 17 at the end and when the game ends so is the end of his relationship as his girlfriend wants to get out and see the world and this leaves him behind. It's a great song to listen to, and I recommend you give it a listen if you haven't heard it yet. Number 7. Faden Renegade. Faden Renegade was the title track off Doug's fourth studio album. It was released in 1999. The song is about a cowboy fading into the sunset. It's a song about getting slower, more tired, and dealing with changes in cowboy country. The narrator sings about not being able to ride anywhere anymore due to all the barbed wire. Cowboys used to free graze over hundreds of acres, but that has come to an end with all the places they can't go anymore due to regulations. Once a super, superstar cowboy in his younger days that they wrote songs about, this Faden Renegade has, quote, made his last stand, unquote. Faden Renegade failed to chart on the country charts, but it remains one of Doug's signature songs. Number six, State Fair. State Fair is an interesting and emotional song about losing family, drunk driving, and the after effects of losing somebody. 
The lyrics are a bit weak and forced at parts, but the warmth from the song makes up for that. The music video is very touching as well. The narrator's second cousin chooses to buy some kids asking him for beer at the gas station in the beginning of the video. His cousin then dies at the hands of a drunk driver on the way to the state fair. Afterwards, the narrator is either returning to the state fair or somewhere like an Astros game, and some kids come up to him asking for beer, in which he then declines. It's a sad song and, like many 90s country songs, tells a story and gives a lesson at life at the same time. Number 5. Red and Rio Grande Red and Rio Grande was released on February 5th, 1994 as the title track to Supernaw's first album. It reached number 23 on the country charts. If I had to describe Red and Rio Grande, it would be that it is a love song dedicated to Texas. It has emotion mixed in with history and geography, with that Texas sound to accompany the lyrics. It really is a beautiful piece of writing and song, even if I have no association with Texas. The song makes me want to go back and see more of the state. Number four, Not Enough Hours in the Night. Not Enough Hours in the Night was released on October 9th in 1995. It did very well on the country charts, reaching number three. It is a very simple yet beautiful song. It is about not having enough hours in the night to be with the one you love. Quote, how time flies when you're in love, unquote, is just one quotable line from this song. It is one of the many of those memorable love songs done right in 90s country. Number three, The Company I Keep. The Company I Keep was one of my favorite musical discoveries of 2017. Doug Supernaw did not release this song as a single. It was put on his Greatest Hits album, which can be purchased in many different places, including DougSupernaw.com. As the website states, the company I keep is reflective of days gone by of traditional country artists, unquote. Check out this amazing song if you have time. It makes you think and reflect. It's rare to encounter a country song in 2017 that touches your heart, but this one really does. The song references artists such as Johnny Cash, Vern Gosden, Elvis Presley, George Jones, Merle Haggard, and more. I won't ruin it for those who haven't heard it, but please take my advice and check it out as it is all over YouTube. Number two, I Don't Call Him Daddy. I Don't Call Him Daddy was released on September 1st, 1993 on Doug's first album, Red and Rio Grande. It was his first and only number one hit to date, hitting its peak in December of 1993. Doug, in an interview, stated he didn't particularly want to sing the song at first. He thought some of the other songs that could wind up on the album would be a better fit. Songs about divorced dads were uncharted territory for the most part. Kenny Rogers actually recorded the song first in 1987, but the song wasn't notable compared to his other hits and it only peaked at number 86 on the country charts. Doug stated also in recent interviews that he received a lot of hate comments from stepfathers over this song. It was interesting to him because there was so much love for this song, but many stepfathers wrote or talked with him that they weren't villains or bad guys. Doug assured them of this. The song wasn't written to vilify stepfathers, though it was written to be about the bond between a father and son, even when they live far apart in separate households. The young blonde boy in the music video was played by Doug's real son, Philip. Whatever became of Philip? Well, now he wears number 89 and is a tight end for the Tennessee Titans in the National Football League. He even caught his first NFL touchdown pass this year. I Don't Call Him Daddy is one of the timeless classics in 90s country. 
It is one of those songs that puts a stamp on a career and ensures that Doug Supernaw will never be forgotten. Even if you don't remember the name Doug Supernaw, if you are a fan of 90s country, you are most likely to remember the song. It was number one for a reason. So with as much praise as I showered on I Don't Call Him Daddy, what could possibly beat it out for number one on my list? Before we get to that, let's look at a couple honorable mentions. The first honorable mention I'm going to mention is a new song by Doug Supernaw called Here's My Heart. It is was released this year in 2017 and it's on his greatest hits album so check that out. The next one is actually his title track You Still Got Me. It's a very emotional and beautiful song. It just barely misses out on this list. And third on honorable mentions is The Note. While it was recorded by Daryl Singletary in 1997, Doug Supernaw actually recorded it first. This version's nice and brings a different type of sound to the song, but it will always remain Daryl's song to me. So now that we have honorable mentions out of the way, let's get to our number one song by Doug Supernaw. And number one is Reno. Reno is one of my favorite songs in 90s country. Reno was released on May 17, 1993. It went up the charts to number four to become Doug's first top ten and first top five hit. The song describes a former lover and the narrator compares her to the city of Reno, Nevada. Not saying that the city itself is heartless, but rather the gambling industry doesn't have a heart nor care when you're down. Reno just happens to be the city used in the song when speaking of gambling. That didn't keep people from getting offended, though. Then Mayor of Reno, Pete Sferraza, thought that it did portray the city as heartless, and due to complaints from residents, one station refused to play the song locally. This mid-tempo song is memorable in so many ways, and though I love most of Doug Supernaw's song, Reno is number one for me. What are your favorite Doug Supernaw songs? Did I miss any for the list? I would love to hear your favorites, so please write those in the comment section below. I intend to cover Montgomery Gentry for this series next. If there are any country artists you would like to see me make a top list for, please write your request in below. I can put that into the lineup. I would be happy to do that. I can cover newer artists, but the base of this list and this series will be 90s country. If you have any requests, though, I would be happy to hear them. Thank you for watching. If this interests you, please subscribe and you can see more in the future. And with that, Lethargic Sloth, out.